There's so much fan service in this. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 2 of Supernatural Season 15. As we continue on with the crisis of God starting the end of the world, Andrew Dabb continuing to ruin the show through its writing, we come to a point where this season is clearly going to be fan service. Three characters. Knock them. No! Four! Four characters return in this episode. One makes absolutely no fucking sense. So what happens is we see that the wall is starting to be battered down. And for some reason, Jack the Ripper, who they they supposedly just had Jack the Ripper on the show. And they do almost nothing with him. They're trying to start a ghost union. And they want to break out of the holds of the refuge of this containment thing. So what happens along the way is some people start to get killed. All the while this is happening, God goes and visits Amara, which I'll admit, I know some people didn't like the Amara character. And I thought that she was a malevolent character. I liked her creation. I liked her build up. And straight up honest, the woman who plays her is gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. So to see her again in this kind of cynical role, I liked that she's matured. But then again, it just ruins everything that season 11 set up in its entirety because those two left reconciling literally millennia since the beginning of time feuds and now they're just bitter so going back to the other characters who return we get rowena who comes back which i'll admit her return makes sense into this but then catch comes back and i fucking hate catch i've never liked this character he's literally the most useless fucking character the show has ever created in its entire history of fucking dumb characters and then they try to play off rowena and him like they did with gabriel and rowena which made sense because those were two malevolent like tricksters, sociopaths, and then you have Ketch who's as boring as a plank of fucking wood. I'm saying a lot of negatives. The positive about this episode, I did like that they are continuing on with the crisis that is happening. I like that they're keeping a consistent narrative even though Dab is ruining it with every chance he can get. There is a consistency of building up towards this whole end of the world, be all or end all sort of idea. And while I don't think the god releasing everything and be just flipping on a hat is good writing at all i do like that they are really trying to double down on it they're trying to make so much sense of the garbage that has been given to them so give them credit for that and then as the episode continues on we see another character come back kevin tran because literally there is no good explanation as to why he comes back they just say that instead of god sending up to heaven he sent him to hell because I want to fucking stab Andrew Dabb in his writing hand. Kevin Tran's in this literally for fan service. He serves almost no purpose to this episode whatsoever, aside from a million squee girls off in the distance going, Eee! I know because I swear when he appeared on screen, I could hear it. I could hear it all over the world. But I will give one point of interesting uh, people who appears. Michael Henderson. This is an actor who I've actually gotten to work with. He actually helped out on a run and gun short film that we shot. He was our main actor. We shot this like three goddamn three, four years ago. So when I saw that he was in, I was like, oh, good for you, dude. It's unfortunate he doesn't have a line, but you know, good for him. Trying to make it in the acting business out here in Vancouver is hella hard from what I've seen. Jesus. They remake the spirit bomb thing from season 11, but they make it like a tiny little clamshell thing. And then the most broken part of the episode happens. Ketch, who is possessed, walks to them on the outside of the fucking border wall and then just stands there and no one says anything. Jack the Ripper clearly broke the rules of whatever this big dome thing is and no one bats an eye because of how horrible this episode's written. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna give this episode a two to seven. It literally started out as a four and then it just slowly battered its way down to dumbness. Just so much dumb shit in this episode. It doesn't help that I've been re-watching season one and just seeing how well shot the episode. Oh, actually, there's one little moment. Before Kevin Tran just randomly appears, they actually did some dark lighting in this fight with him catching random old ghost lady. I liked how it was shot. It was reminiscent of what it was. But mind you, this was Robert Singer, and Robert Singer is the laziest director that they have in their entire forte. So, lazy writer, lazy director. What do you expect? That's all from me in this episode review. Sorry if I pissed some of you off. I'm just kind of pissed because of how this episode had potential to be okay. 
again, I don't mind that they're continuing the storyline. I'm happy that they're keeping with this, but holy shit, I don't have much hope for this season anymore. I have almost none. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Ugh. Thanks for watching the video. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.